What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Just uh, getting some stuff ready to take down to the flea market. Some PS4, PS3, some NES games. Just some here's some stuff for uh, eBay. Now I know a lot of people on YouTube have been talking about the Nintendo GameCube and the crazy prices on the GameCube, right? I've been going through some of my PlayStation One and PlayStation Two games, and let me tell you guys, some of the prices on those games are crazy as well. So let's let's talk about some of the crazy price hikes and a lot of the PS1 and PS2 games that were already expensive to begin with. So the first game we're going to look at in this little retro gaming trip we're about to take is Klonoa 2. Now, why do I even care what Klonoa 2 cost? And not that long ago, it cost $35. That's kind of crazy. I looked up prices on Klonoa 1. That's been a rare and expensive PlayStation 1 game for quite some time. I did an eBay search and saw a copy of Klonoa 2 selling for like 80 bucks, And I was like, what? It's like, is that some kind of special edition that I knew nothing about? Did some research. So, okay, so regardless, the virus, the whatever hit, I have no idea. All I know is not just GameCube, but now PlayStation 1 and 2 RPGs, platformers, some of the more popular replayable games are starting to hike up in price. This one is selling right now. Klonoa 2, Lunate's Veil, vale, on the PlayStation 2. It's selling consistently for 75 between $75 and $80. So, ugh. let's see if the price goes up a little bit on this. If it goes down, I feel like it should go down to right around the $40 price point, you know, after everything's said and done. But still, you know, $40 for Lunate's Veil, vale is that's pushing it. $80 for this game? I don't know. It's crazy. Klonoa 2, Lunate's Veil vale on the PlayStation 2 costs almost $80 now. That's crazy. So after Klonoa 2, I wanted to look at a lot of games that I knew were worth some money. I wanted to see what the prices on those were, which brought me to Wild Arms Alter Code F, which is a, it's a remake of the first Wild Arms game, I do believe. It's been, it's, I have played this game, but it has been some time. Um, I actually played this on one of those backwards compatible PS3s, but I've since bricked it, sold it, uh, scrapped it out for parts or whatever. Okay, so this was around a, I don't know, a $70 to $80 RPG for the longest time. I know it was kind of kind of pricey when I got it, you know, back in the day or whatever. So I looked up the price on this one. So Wild Arms Alter Code F is coming in at like $130, $140. That's, you know, when you think about expensive RPGs and you think about a Wild Arms game, especially on the PS2, Wild Arms 5 comes to mind. I don't even own that game because years ago that game was very expensive. I couldn't afford it. So this one's now more expensive than what Wild Arms 5 was the past couple of years. So, if you want a copy of Wild Arms Alter Code F, and this does come with like a like anime DVD, so you can watch that on your PlayStation 2 Slim. That's pretty cool, and I got one that has a copy in the manual and everything. I got a complete copy, but if you do want a copy complete, it's going to cost you right around $130 to $140. Ugh, yeah, it's a lot of money for Wild Arms Alter Code F. Crazy, crazy prices these days, I'll tell you. Okay, guys, next game. This is a big one. This is one, I'll be honest, I have not played this game yet, and that is Xenosaga Part 3. Now, I have played the first Xenosaga game, or at least the first few hours of the first game, the first of the three games. I just don't have the time right now to put into that. Maybe in the future. That's why I bought the games a while back, you know, to play one day. I'll, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll get to them one day, or maybe I'll sell them. Maybe I should sell them, because, you, you know... Let's say you're playing Xenosaga, you play Xenosaga 1 and 2, you, you know, they're, they're pretty cheap, right? You know, $15, $20 game or whatever. But then you want to play that third game. You don't have a modded system, so you need an original disc. So if you want a complete copy, you know, I'm sure a disc-only copy is much cheaper, I'm sure. But the people buy, they're buying those up. But... Okay, if you want a complete copy of Xenosaga 3, $180. <laughs> oh, yikes. $180 for Xenosaga 3. This is a game that just, what, last weekend, me and a buddy of mine, fellow YouTuber, Dat Game Collector, we were uh, hanging out, and we even talked about the price of this game. And I was like, yeah, it's like a $60 game. And he was like, yeah, it's like an $80 game. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it's like an $80 game. No, it's $180. Like, I thought this was a, you know, between $60 and $80 game. $180 for Xenosaga 3. That is crazy. But... Yeah, uh, people are buying it. There's one with a holographic cover, a variant. Uh, God only knows what that goes for. But yeah, if you want Xenosaga 3 on the PS2, it's going to cost you 180 bucks. The next game that we're going to look at is one that's known for being a big money game on the PlayStation 2, and that is Dot Hat Quarantine. Now, Dot Hat Quarantine was a $100 game for quite a while, last few years that I can remember. It was always known as a very expensive RPG on the PlayStation 2. And that's a trend that you'll notice with a lot of these games that we're looking at today. A lot of them are RPGs, most of them. Uh, 
and they're, they're games with a lot of replay value, and those are the ones that are just kind of going up in price. And it, it's the ones that have been valuable. They're just becoming more valuable. And, you know, that kind of sucks for collectors and or people that really just want to play the games. Now, I was really hooked on the GU series of Dot .hack games, and I was so happy that they got remastered or ported or whatever to the PlayStation 4. I played them on the PlayStation 2, played them again on the PlayStation 4, and I was so happy they added in that fourth scenario with, uh, that tells what happened with Ovan and Haseyu. Um, I really recommend that game on the PlayStation 4. If you can get Dot .hack uh, GU last recode on the PlayStation 4, pick it up. It's pretty cheap, but... If you want to copy a Dot .hack quarantine on the PlayStation 2 now, it's going to cost you between $200 and $210. Yeah, it's a $200 game now, Dot .hack quarantine. Crazy, right? Next up was one of the most popular JRPGs on the PlayStation 2, and that is Sakoden 5. Suikoden, Sakoden, you guys know what I'm talking about. Sakoden 5. Uh, this game, it, it starts off really, really slow. It starts off kind of messed up. There's some kind of weird messed up things that happen in the beginning of this game. Uh, the queen, she's like, I get what, it's been a while since I played it. She's like manipulated by the sun rune and she scorches the earth on this town and now everybody hates the queen and there's all these weird uh, manipulations that are going on in the town. Uh, you know, it's been a few years since I played it, but this is a really, really good RPG. I remember, uh, you know, just being hooked on the story. I remember it starting off really slow, but once it got going, it, uh, it got going pretty good. And it's known, a lot of people have played it and liked it, and it's known for being a, around a $50 game on the PlayStation 2, but not anymore. Not anymore. You know, I'm not going to say it's hundreds of dollars because it's not, thank God, but if you do want a copy of Sakoden 5, speak it in, Sakoden 5 on the PlayStation 2, it's going to cost you between $80 and $90. Yeah, that's a lot. You know, that is a lot, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad considering that Xenosaga 3 is going for $180 and Dot Hat Quarantine is going between $200 and $210. You know, $80 or $90. If you want a copy of this game, just kick the money out. It's pretty good. And I got the strategy guide right there. This is actually one of the games where I do have its strategy guide. It's a companion strategy guide, a, a dying art in video games. But there it is, the Code in 5. Um, I recommend it. You know, Even at that price point, I recommend it. It's a, it's a good RPG, and um, it's better than some of the other games that have come out on the PlayStation 2 in the series. But, yeah, if you want it, 80 90 bucks, it's the Code in 5 on PlayStation 2. Now, guys, we're going to take a look at some PlayStation 1 games. But first, I want to show you the companion guide I found for Dot .hack Quarantine. Sorry I didn't find it when I found the game, but I just wanted to show you that I had that for whatever reason. Anyway, first PlayStation 1 game that we're going to talk about is Ghost in the Shell. Now, good game. This is known for being a good game on the PlayStation 1. It wasn't always known for being the most expensive game. Um, but it was known for being a very good game. The people that programmed Ghost in the Shell, uh, they knew what they were doing on the PlayStation 1. I think it's a really good game. The physics on it are good. And it's not a game that I would consider selling because it's that good. Anyway, if you want a copy of Ghost in the Shell in today's market, it's going to cost you $150. Yeah, $150 for Ghost in the Shell. That is absolutely insane. Like I said, it's like what's happening with the GameCube is also happening with the PlayStation 1, so crazy. Next up on the list, and this has been known as a good and expensive RPG for the longest time, and that is Sakoden, Suikoden, Sakoden 2 on the PlayStation 1. This has been one of the most, like I just said, one of the best, most expensive RPGs on the system, and that's no exception now. This was a, I want to say, $100 RPG for quite a few years, and I remember when the price started to go up a little bit. It went up to right around retro stores were selling it, but like $150, $160. And that's like, oh my God, I'd never buy that game at that price. That is absolutely insane. It has gotten worse. And it's funny because this is a game that I've, it's for sale at the store up near me. I know right now, I don't know what they want for it. I never asked because I own a copy, but if you want a copy of Sakoden 2 on the PlayStation 1, it's going to cost you anywhere between 300 to 320 dollars that is absolutely insane i say get a modbo 5 chip mod a ps2 slim burn the game or buy a repro and play it that way if you really want to play the game that bad or play it through an emulator buy a ps1 mini and load a sd card full of roms and just play it that way i wouldn't have bought this game at that price as a matter of fact because it costs so much money now i am strongly considering selling this game I'll sell this one game and then go buy a mod by modded PS2 Slim and burn the ROM and play it that way. That's almost worth doing. It's something to consider. 
But yeah, if you want it and you got the money, you really want a copy of Sakoden 2, yeah, it's going to cost you anywhere between $300 and $320. That absolutely blows my mind. It, uh, it's like these video games sometimes, you know, it's like the stock market or something. Yeah, never thought I'd see the day that this game goes for that much money. This next game is my personal favorite on this list, and that is Valkyrie Profile. I absolutely adore this game. This is an Enix game, I guess before they teamed up with Squaresoft and made Square Enix. Uh, Tri-Ace uh, made this game. They did the second Star Ocean game on the PlayStation 1. They also did a more recent game that you guys may have played called uh, Exist Archive. Um, pretty good game, fun little RPG, but the battle system is really going to remind you of Valkyrie Profile. It's that turn-based, uh, timing-based uh, battle system. It's kind of like um, if you guys have played Super, if you like Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier or its sequel, if you've played that English translated ROM, if you have, then you're going to love this game. But I mean, if you've played that, you've obviously played this. Anyway, this has it's known for an, being an expensive game on the PlayStation 1. Always has been. It kind of sucks because I wish it was cheaper. That way more people could afford it. But Anyway, okay, Valkyrie Profile. If you want a copy of Valkyrie Profile on the PlayStation 1, it's going to cost you $300. Now, you know, this is a, this was a $100 game on the PlayStation 1 for a long time. I mean, hell, I may have paid close to that $100 price point for the copy that I have, although I've had a few copies of this game over the years. Uh, it's, it's a good one. But the good news is if you really want to play Valkyrie Profile, they did port it to the PSP. It's called Valkyrie Profile Linux. It's got added cutscenes, and it, I would consider the PSP version to be the definitive version of Valkyrie Profile. Easy to emulate, easy to play, um, and not that expensive. It may be a $25 to $30 game on the PSP now, but there's the uh, strategy guide I actually had when I played through this game the first time. But yeah, Valkyrie Profile, an amazing, amazing RPG. I cannot recommend this game enough. I love it. I love the hand-drawn sprite work. I soundtrack everything i love about this game it is it's such a good game it, it just sucks that it's going for what it's going for now that 300 dollars that can suck my ass but valkyrie profile is a great game cannot recommend it enough next up this is another heavy hitter another one that's known for being a pretty expensive game on the playstation one and that is the misadventures of tron bond now this one's a little bit controversial because this has been known for being a expensive and decent game for you know some time just like a lot of the other playstation games on this list but this one came with the Mega Man Legends demo disc, the Mega Man Legends 2 demo disc. I don't have that, so I'm basing the price on uh, just a complete copy. I guess not really complete, but just a copy with the game and not the additional demo disc. So that's what I have. Like I said, I'm basing these all these prices on games that I just have in my collection of video games. So if you want a copy of the, let's say you want a complete copy. Now let's just say you want a copy the way I have it, the demo disc. It's going to cost you anywhere from $220 to $240 now. If you want the copy with the demo disc, I, I need to do a little bit more research, but it looks like it's going to cost in the very high 200s to $300 range. And that is I, I, it's to be expected with the prices of these games now. And you know, you're, you're seeing it with Valkyrie Profile, you're seeing it with Ghost in the Shell and Sakoden, but you know, Tron Bond's no, no exception. You know, prices are getting crazy on this one too. So expect it to happen with a lot of other ones on the PlayStation library. Lastly, we have two games here, and that is Tales of Destiny and Tales of Destiny 2. That, you know, Tales of Destiny 2 is not the continuation of Tales of Destiny 1, but both of these games are going for right around the same price point, which is interesting. The first Tales of Destiny game has always been the cheaper of the two games. Tales of Destiny 2 was known for being the expensive one. Uh, Tales of Destiny 1 was what, 50 or 60 bucks, and then Tales of Destiny 2 was $100, right? It is not like that anymore. Both of these games, if you want them today in today's market, both of these games are going to cost you $250. $250 for Tales of Destiny 1, $250 for Tales of Destiny 2. If you want both, I imagine it would cost you $500. Although the seller should give you a little bit of a break on the price if you're buying two $250 games. But yeah, these are $250 if you want them now in today's market. They're, they're good games. you know. I love them. And I do have the strategy guide for Tales of Destiny too. I, you know, I like Tales of Fantasia. Hell, I even like it on the Game Boy Advance. I'm a Tales of fanboy, all right? I'm a Tales of fanboy. Deal with it. But, <laughs> yeah, these are pretty good games on the PlayStation 1. And, um, you know, a series that I'm glad Namco really stuck with. And it's one of my favorite, if I'm going to be honest, favorite JRPG series out there today. And it really got me into hack and slash JRPGs. 
Okay guys, just a quick update. I'm, I'm busy driving right now. I'm riding around getting it. So I'll show you what I got from the flea market, everything that I traded in, uh, you know, that bag of stuff that you saw in the beginning of the video. I got this copy of Shining Force for the Game Gear. I don't even have a Game Gear, but I, I guess I'm gonna have to get one now. It's kind of weird. I just sold a copy of Shining Force on the Sega Genesis, my Sega Genesis copy. I'm coming up to a red light. Um, the reason I sold that is because I have that game on the Sega Genesis collection, uh, which is also, I also sold a Sega Genesis collection. I sold my Sega Genesis collection on the PS4 because I have it on the Switch. And if I have it on the Switch, I have it on the go. I can play it on the TV, bada bing, bada boom. I also got for that pile of NES games and a couple of PS4 games and stuff, this uh, 2064 Read Only Memories. This game looks like it, uh, plays like snatcher with the story elements and how there's like those mini games and stuff i don't know man this uh looked uh looked pretty interesting but anyway that's what i got from that uh pile of video games that you saw in the beginning of the video anyways guys till next time peace